difficulties, situation in your home, relationship, bring it on. Saturday 2 to 4 p.m. only on my TV. Andrew Minaka and uh, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Youth the Standard Program and uh, we are here serving you all the way from uh, Turaki in Suva, Fiji. To those of you that always look forward to this time, and I believe for New Methodists this morning or every Saturday morning for that matter, you're always meeting up, doing your visitation. Some of you have been through your visitation or do your Bible reading and also your memory joggers or other sports uh, that you have enjoyed in the morning. And now you're already listening to the Youth Standard Program. Well, this morning I thought of bringing my daughter with me. And for those of you who haven't uh, known or met her, her name is uh, Rosie. And uh, how old are you, Rosina? 37. Uh, she's uh, 37 in 2022. Mm -mm. And uh, we will be sharing a bit, and we will be joined later by um, Asinate, uh, who is my daughter-in-law. The reason why I'm bringing them uh, to uh, share the experiences, uh, because you may be a youth now, not knowing what is out there, but if you hear uh, some of the choices in life and testimonies, it might help. Uh, with the uh, way that you, you know, live your life. Eh? And, and that is the reason why I have brought them this morning. So uh, <laughs> as you're listening in from all different zones, worship centers, or even your family, uh, some of you may be taking the time this morning to sit together as a family. Uh, for those families uh, abroad, uh, thank you for joining us. And I believe for U.S., Tara and Lissy may be still in school. And uh, you have Europe, which is exactly the opposite, going on to your midnight there in, uh, in Europe. And uh, whatever time you get to um, watch this uh, program later, uh, we would like to say uh, thank you for taking the time or putting some time aside uh, to listen in to the Youth Standard Program. Well, this program uh, has been um, on air for quite a fair bit of time, um, the experiences of different youths. Uh, it, it started during COVID when people are struggling to, you know, um, uh, I would say to get used to the abnormal. Eh? and um, not going to school, um, having virtual classes, and um, not having any gadgets to be able to tune in to those uh, uh, virtual classes. So a lot of uh, uh, challenges faced. And um, not only that, we managed to uh, get in a lot of other uh, different youths and uh, gender all over the world uh, to be able to share their experiences uh, on their journey in life that uh, has a sort of made an impact to um, a lot of people, when we get feedback uh, for them to say, you know, thank you. And they even remember, it's amazing, on how they remember the names of those uh, children or the names of that young woman from Christchurch or that young man from Auckland or that young girl all the way from Europe. Uh, they remember their names because of the experiences shared uh, on this Youth Center program that sort of um, helped them a bit yeah. uh, on, to cope or being more resilient uh, to the things that the world throw um, at, you know, at you youths without you having any control over it. So not only for the youths, uh, this is a good program too for parents or grandparents like me um, because we get to hear them and then we sort of uh, like if that, you know, if that young girl is sharing the, her experience or that young boy is saying the way it is, and this is exactly what I'm doing to my children. Yeah. yeah. So it's more relatable uh, to us parents. So it's not only for the youth. It's uh, for everybody, I would say, like sort of like a family. Uh, we take our cue because when we hear children sharing their experience and say, okay, I'm doing that, doesn't seem to work. And uh, also for children hearing uh, uh, the other perspective on, and then you say to yourself, okay, I'm blessed to have this and it gets you to be more grateful uh, with the, um, you know, uh, upbringing and everything that you go through. When you get to hear some children, they really struggle in life. Uh, to even uh, take lunch to school or find enough money in their um, 
uh, cards to be able to, uh, to go to school. And uh, on that note, we would like to welcome everybody and thank you uh, for joining us. So this evening or this morning, the sharing is more targeted at, at the um, young adults, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, the decision you make because you get to make your decisions and uh, you are being exposed to a lot of things. A lot of things oh, may be okay. not available at home, but you mm -hmm. get exposed to it when you go to school. And uh, it gives you um, a sense of um, direction there, yeah. uh, just by relating yeah. to whatever story is going to be shared yeah. this morning. Well, to start it off, I will ask um, Rosie to share. Um, Rosie, just share like um, as the Holy Spirit leads you, you know. Uh, this is a youth center program. It's a, a gospel program. And um, that Bible verse really says, I alone know, no, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, eh? yeah. I alone know the plans I have for you. You know, plans to prosper you, never to harm you, and to bring about the future that you hope for. Yeah. Um, that Bible verse, maybe now, then you say to yourself, okay, you know, that makes sense. And uh, if you're a believer, sometimes you give up on the Bible verse yourself. Yes. Like you don't really think, does it really work, you know? And, um, and sometimes you go through all those uh, hardships and then you say, is this really his plan on my life? Yeah. So if you can just share with our viewers on, um, you know, the school you go to, um, growing up. And um, yeah, just share like initially, just for them to have a, um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just to have a peep into because as you share moving forward, then at least they know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm her eldest daughter, uh, mother to three boys that sh sh the grandmother that she looks after. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> my mom has raised my three boys with my youngest sister. Um, <clears throat> so I attended uh, And Nenefi you have school. two daughters. Yes, two Don't forget daughters. your two daughters. They may be listening, watching <laughs> you from home. So <clears throat> with my uh, children, uh, the boys have spent all their life with their grandmother. Um, I'm going to take us back where I attended Nandi Airport School. Um, then I went to Shiri Vakananda College. Back then it was Swami Vakananda High School. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was SVH. Eh? SVH now it's yes. SVC. Now it's SVC, yes. So um, if I, there's a lot of things in life um, that I regret. Um, if someone had to ask me, like my, my sister once asked me, if you had to rewind time or go back to your mm. past, where would you like to restart it from? My answer to her was uh, tertiary. Uh, mm. The reason being is because in high school, I would say I was a very committed uh, Christian. Um, my other sister, the one who resides in Germany, we, uh, we took Swiss in school. Uh, we sang during assembly. In any school, we sang Christian song. She would strum the guitar. Uh, it was uh, the boldness and the confidence that uh, was instilled from us from home. Where, wherever you go, whatever you do, it has to uh, support Christ. Like We have to live a Christ-like life. Mm. So we had to balance that with um, the, uh, the church that we were attending, our upbringing. So it was just normal, like it was part of our life. But when I left high school, uh, it was when I went to stay in Suva because uh, it's first time for me not to live with my family. It was a little bit hard for me. Um, the reason why I would rewind to go and start from that time because from that time was when I started making the change in, the your change life. in yeah. my life. You know, on how you've lived uh, life and it has been so sheltered. Yes. Uh, sheltered in the fact that anything and everything you hear is just all about God. Yes. And the only, I would say, exposure you would have is going to school is when you are with your friends that yeah. are not in church. Yeah. But other than that, every... It, every day is yeah. like with youth, we would go... Yeah give tracks. So every day it was like we were surrounded continuously by uh, people. Anything to do with the church. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. I, and I think, you know, as you're listening today, like for the youths, eh? yes. you know, um, when you are with your youth group or maybe with some families uh, that you become, uh, you know, family friends. Family friends, yeah. But you all go to church. I believe the real test is when you go and into the exposure, when you're on your own, That's, and you have to make a decision yes, on, your, on, your on, on your own. Yes. 
because when you were with the, I mean, even though you were influenced by your group, but you're influenced still in yes. the church, you know? Yeah. When you come out, like for your case, yes. when you have to move to Suba, uh, uh, staying in a new place, yes. Uh, totally different. Totally uh, different. You hear swearing. Of the house. Yeah. You hear. Yeah, like those yeah. exposures. Yeah. Which is good that you're sharing now because it goes back to you, you. You know, like sometimes that change. Uh, your future you cannot control. Eh? Uh, say for her, because she chose uh, a study or um, I think there was. Uh, catering. Yeah, catering. Uh, to come and do a diploma. She chose that uh, career path that had made her send her to Suva and uh, stayed with the relatives, yes. you know, to be able to achieve that. And it can go for anyone who's listening to us today. And uh, when that happened, it's so easy to uh, move away from the teaching you hear from home. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that's what happened, you know, to, to our family. Because when she came and being exposed to that, uh, she avoided coming home for the weekend. Yeah. Um, because she, she found she found something that she never used to see at home. She found the lights, uh, you know, other things. That is, uh, you know, like attractive to normal yeah. youths. Uh, yeah, like for those of you who come from a very strict Christian home, yeah. uh, like you go to school, you come back, you can't step out of the compound, you get a hiding. Or when you, um, like you've been taught to live on your own when your parents are not around, around. But when you go and stay with uh, people that God is there, but not the main, uh, it, like it's not a priority, as long as you're serving God on Sundays. So, like for me... Like you have a lot of choices. Yes, yeah. like your choices, like you just want yeah, to... Like you this. come from a home where, when you're you giving keep only one answer, <laughs> and then you're being exposed to a place where, where you, you have, have multiple a choice. choices. Yes. Because I used to go back home. Like one time I remember my sisters were laughing at me. My younger sister, uh, she was uh, like in class six, I think it was, or class five. I came back from, from, from school straight because I had to go and attend youth. That was uh, back when we had the first, uh, my other sister, when Jasper had brought in her best friend from school and we had this big, massive youth camp. My mom just didn't know what to say. When I got off the van and my hair was blonde, and when I say blonde, it was striking yellow. Uh, she just turned my way and looked away, but my sisters were laughing at me. And the, the thing is with us, when you're growing up at that stage, you want to try everything that yeah. you have been Haven't told no. Yeah. So like for you, it's like, okay, I'll do this. Before I go home, I'll do that. I had piercings, I had, like I had gone to movies. I've never entered a theater till I was in catering. Like um, decisions which I regret now because I should have instilled in myself, which takes me back to now, at my age now, when I read the Word of God, tithing pays a big part yeah. in our life. Uh, it's not because the churches want your money, no. It's because it plays a big part in your life uh, as a human being on this earth. Um, it, it's a portion of you that keeps you connected with Christ and keeps everything that's connected to you safe and secure. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I'm saying this is because I never tithe. If I had tithed and been consistent with it, um, the teachings of my, my parents and the sharings I used to have with my siblings, especially my sister after me because we were quite close back then, um, would have been uh, a tiny voice telling me, no, not this, I will do this. Like, your maturity level would be more than what it is. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's why, like for me, if anyone asks me, why do you con confide in your sister? She's my, my sister is the youngest uh, from the three girls before my brother. A lot of people ask me the question, why do I confide in her? The reason why I confide in her is she's wise beyond her ears for my age, both all my siblings are, <laughs> <laughs> because the time when I'm supposed to be reading God's word to gain his wisdom, yeah. I was seeking it into the world by studying. Yeah. And, and just to backtrack on that, because you left home a little bit earlier, that's what I shared yes. the family yes. table talk this morning. Eh? Um, you know, you don't really appreciate that exposure yes. until you lose until it. Until you lose yeah. it. <laughs> uh, to, because when you, when you continue to hear it, sometimes you uh, hate your parents yes. for it, but... Um, 
because you continue to hear the same, and then you say to yourself, you give up, say, oh, okay, whatever, you know. Um, yes. Just do it. That's, that's exactly what I do. Uh, for those of you who were my friends back then, you would realize, like, when you tell me, oh, you met your mom. Uh, why didn't you go up and say hi? Oh, it's mom. I'll just get there. I know exactly what she will say from beginning to end because it's a constant reminder. Um, as a youth, I, I tell you, you will miss that voice. You will miss that teaching when you've left home. Yeah. Um, we tend to take our parents for granted. We tend to take our siblings for granted. Um, the loving home that we have, mm. somehow, <clears throat> If you are not careful, um, you lose faith of the people that really care for you and love you, yeah. and you lose faith of um, lose faith of what's there right in front of you that you could um, invest in that will bring about your wealth. Mm. Uh, all these somehow, if you're not careful, it sidetracks you. Mm. We always say, "Oh, like now I'm hearing youths go, oh." Mom, I'm going back to mom and dad. Like, it's a dreadful thing to you. But for me, I was, like, if I get a chance, whenever I'm talking to someone else, don't you learn from me? Have you heard about my story? Like, a lot of people will say, aren't you embarrassed that your parents uh, uh, use you as an example? I'm not. Really, I'm not. Now, I'm not. Before, I, w I used to be embarrassed. Like, I used to tell myself, I'm not worth anything. But when I've gotten to tithe and understand the where my parents are coming from, where my, my siblings were coming from, the word uh, that is constantly preached to others. I mean, I'm the daughter of, a, of, of two leaders that lead a church. And if people out there are listening and are, are gaining knowledge and strength by serving this God right and doing things right, I'm living right under their roof. But that's what Satan does. They blind, he blinds ours, mm. our eyes from things that are of value to our life. Mm. Like, I'm going to share a bit of my work experience. So when I was in catering, my mom trying to make me uh, an obedient child. So in catering, my, my job was to come during the weekends and work as a casual worker. Either I'll be counting the cash for kids that uh, back then, uh, it was at Pacific. We would be counting the coins or I would go and do the lounge duties. Um, still, uh, with a house, a car, a loving home, food on the table, I don't lack anything, but I still snuck out to meet boys. Uh, climbed off a roof to meet a guy. Uh, <clears throat> came home late, pretending I came back from prayer walk. You may be laughing from where you're watching from, but it's reality. Well, these are the realities, eh? <laughs> yes. And, and I'm, I'm happy with the fact that you are open about it. Like what you said earlier, uh, the point of reference, I believe, because we, you know, we look after church, we yes. look after ministry, and uh, and I'm glad that you picked that um, point up. You know, mm. like when I I do that a lot, yes. I use you as a as an example, mm. and uh, I would like to apologize. Maybe sometimes <laughs> it offends you. Uh, the reason why I do that because not only for her, I do it for my family. Even for me, I don't have my you know my good points, and I'm very open to share that because I believe. Um, as youths or for people that are listening or even for parents that when they get to hear the story of, you know, uh, mistakes made, yeah. it's like you're trying to forewarn a person, yeah. uh, this has happened, please don't look this way, look the other way, yeah. you know. Mm. Uh, it helps them in that direction. Yeah. And, um, and for our family, um, you know, she became my example um, um, because of leaving home early, and to the extent that even when she was doing the catering, uh, we had secured, I don't know whether you still yes, remember. the scholarship. Uh, she was supposed to uh, go to Griffiths University <coughs> in Brisbane. Um, it's funny, because when we went uh, um, last year with my husband, um, the hotel organized, like you can see the university, just <laughs> off the hill. And I still, I, and then I was saying to my husband, imagine that's the university that Rosie was supposed to come to. Uh, she had the scholarship have everything done, have everything ready for her to go. And um, straight out, because she was so involved with little things, doing casual jobs then for the airline, um, she came and she said, no, I don't want to go and study. Uh, I don't want to do that. Um, maybe now I look back as a parent, I could have forced them or forced you. Mm. 
But I've lived my life, like what I said in the morning on the family table talk. I don't really, um, you know, be shot belting all the time, or um, most of the time. I, I do talking. It's like, you know, go to the toilet, stand there, or stand in the corner, time out. <laughs> you know, all those kind of uh, things. Mm. And uh, when she told us that she doesn't want to uh, go to university, I just took that. I didn't force her. Now, when I look back, I should have. I should have forced her to say, you know, you go to school. But I always think, like, if I have to force her, and she doesn't, you know, it's, she's not willing, and it's not in her heart, and she will go and not uh, bring the result, you know, you're supposed to bring. So I went along with her not wanting to go. And uh, she lived her life from then on yeah. um, with a decision that she made. And uh, I think from, um, from Rose's angle, indirectly, she's trying to say that you may be saying, mm. no, your, your father or your mom uh, can be um, powerful people in the church yeah. or sharing the gospel. The, but it mm. doesn't mean that you are saved by that yes. element, you know, by you, that fact. Yeah. It doesn't save you. No. You need to do your own decision <laughs> you, to save you. You, you have yeah. to, I mean... It's not. It's not their life. It's yours. Yeah. We always say it's my life. I'll do whatever I want. That's the you're taking that concept wrongly. Mm -hmm. um, your parents have been put in this in this world to raise you, nurture you, to bring out the best in you. You know nothing about because you haven't reached their age yet. Mm -hmm. You're still growing. But the problem with us, we think that drinking, hanging out with peers, or watching movies. This is good in the eyes of those that have nothing else to do and just want to waste their life away. But if you're looking at yourself like you want to make yourself count in the community you're in. Like with a purpose. It, eh? Yes. Yeah. You have to live your life with a purpose. If you don't, money, trust me, money will just, money you put in your pocket in your bank account, you won't know where it goes. It'll be still zero. You'll be loaning left, right, and center. You'll be lying one, one lie to another to another. You'll be moving from house to house. I'm saying this because I've lived it. It's not, uh, it's not a, a good life. A good life. Um, there's, a, there's a photo ID. My mom always say I look like a druggie. I've never changed the photo because it's a constant reminder to me that if I have to go down that road, I'll look older than my mom. As you can see, she's in her 50s. I'm in my 30s. Uh, we were just sharing that. Uh, I just told her, Mom, I look fatter than you. It, you know, like... It's all in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's all in the mind. When, when your parents say, don't go here. <clears throat> Stop hanging around with Titilia. <clears throat> Stop going around with John. They're not saying that because they hate your friend. They're saying that because they want you to change your, your route. The, we have a lot of paths in life. But the path that you have to take, that's the choice you make. I chose the wrong path. But thank God, before I turned 40, <laughs> I made a turnaround I, in my life. You turn. Yes. So coming from, like, I'm speaking mostly to those that come from uh, families that... Um, a church, uh, or, I mean, church, uh, pastors, yeah, or, pastors or church children, elders. Church elders. Or even believers, if they believe in God and they live a godly life yes. at all. Youth leaders, those that... The, the, I mean, you come from, maybe your parents are not pastors, but you are youth leaders, children. Your parents don't hold prominent positions in church, but you have been chosen because you attend church to be a youth leader. Sometimes you think the weight of the world is on you and you just want to stand up and go, oh, I'm tired of this, I'll do it this way. One thing I've learned is if you don't endure what you're doing, you will never get what you're dreaming of. Mm. Um, I think I finished all the positions in church uh, before I left. Uh, still, somehow, I still chose to live a different life than what my parents uh, raised me to be. I was youth leader. I sang with my sisters and my, my siblings when we used to go for evangelism. I was a Sunday school teacher assistant to my, my mom. Uh, there was a lot of things that I was exposed to to uh, mature me both physically and uh, spiritually. spiritually. But I still chose to go down the path where I can <clears throat> do whatever I want. If I don't want to work, I don't want to work. And, and with that path that I chose, I found lack. When I say lack is, I was working for Air Pacific for almost nine years. Nine years, if I have to look back, I have nothing on me to account for that nine years. I was well paid, 
every time I would get increments because they pay increments for extra work, for your good uh, character at work. The, the company gives increments. Um, then when I left Fiji Airways, my mom uh, asked me if I wanted to study. Still, them trying to support me to, to, be, uh, to achieve what I want to achieve, the best I want to achieve. Mind you, by then I had already three boys. But was I looking after them? No. Money I got from Air Pacific, my son never saw it. I even tasted the life of being a, um, sons of um, a woman that works for Air Pacific. I'm telling you this because um, anyone out there, if you think that you, what you're doing is, is, going to, uh, is, uh, what, is giving you happiness, think again. I left uh, Air Pacific. My mom paid for my studies to go to uh, go and study graphics because I love uh, art and craft. I, I just love doing stuff, printing T-shirts and stuff. So my mom decided to sign me up. No. Instead of school, certain times in school, I go out clubbing. My lies to my mom was uh, I had to sell night classes. All these was amounting to a path where I didn't realize was just taking me further and further away from God. After that, and mind you, I'm staying under their roof. Like what my mom said, she never shoved Jesus down my throat. Um, it was there. It was a constant reminder. We would have numerous family meetings where I would have tantrums and outbursts and scream back at my mom. Sorry, mom, for that. Yeah. Scream back at my mom and yell uh, words that a daughter is not supposed to say to their mother. I'm sharing this to you because some of you are doing that. When you tell your mom to get out of your life, you're not important to me. Um, when I look back, I made my mom like she did not matter an ounce in my life. I was so angry with my mom for trying to help me to be a better person. I moved out. I packed just one bag of clothes and took my two younger sons. I left. Got the first job I could grasp, which was just a call center. I went and work, living uh, with a friend. I had to get people to look after my sons while I was working. And instead of coming home to look after my boys, I went out drinking. I'm, telling, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm sharing my life. I'm not ashamed of it because I don't want you, a young, young girl, a young man, don't waste your life away. And it's not too late to turn around. This, I'm in my early 20s. After call center job, one after another, I had loan from the bank. I had loan from money lenders. My credit rating was really bad. Yeah. Uh, police would call my mom and dad. They would pay for everything. But still, but still, I still chose the other path. You know, I used to uh, uh, I thank you, Rosie, for uh, sharing that. Uh, we welcome uh, my daughter-in-law, Asnati Bulona, joining us uh, uh, this morning. And uh, <clears throat> what uh, Rosie is uh, sharing with us today, on that uh, note, like you may be listening in as a parent, uh, like me, and um, if anything you ever want is the best for your children, and I believe any parents would like that. And for, for Rosie, um, the dad doesn't talk much or have anything, you know, to be too overbearing, I would say. But it's always like on me. And I don't want to let go of uh, every opportunity. And if you're listening today, I'm the kind of the mother that um, give freedom to my children to make their own choices. Uh, but yet, we'll never give up on them and continue to make, um, uh, provide options. Uh, on which way to go, on what they can do uh, to uh, better themselves. So even though with all that that she was doing, nearly everything that I've ever tried uh, to make her uh, a better 
a person I would say, or to help her with her career or help her uh, with her future was received in a totally um, a different way. So it started off with at a university, tried for her, got her scholarship, uh, financed everything, but she just came, you know, just uh, throw it back in my face and say, no, I don't want to. And um, <clears throat> even when she started her new family, I helped her. Um, if you can have, uh, Anna Ray just have a whole lot of us in. And, uh, helped her in her setup and um, got her, uh, her place to rent, um, furnish everything right down to the nitty gritty of things uh, for my daughter because I love my daughter. And I know you love um, your children, uh, for parents that are listening in today and for you children as well, if you're listening in this morning, know for a fact, nobody else will ever love you like your parents would do and more so for your mom, I can say that and um, did everything for her. Even in that stage, um, still no. She lives her life. And I can't remember any time that I've ever come to her uh, or to yell at her to say, you know, do something about your life. I'm always like, if, if anything that I'm telling her, I said, you should stop doing that, please. Think of your children. Uh, think of them, they're growing up. You can't just leave your children like that. You should stop doing that. And she doesn't like that. So most of the time, if I'm talking to her, she's always, and now when she mentioned it, then I sort of, uh, I remember those days. I, I sort of like just closed it off. It, it used to be painful, uh, but I went through with it. Um, she will, to the extent, swear at me. Um, I say words that you don't say to your parents. And I, I didn't grow up in that kind of atmosphere from home. Uh, that I do that to my parents. My my mom stayed with me until she died, and until I have my children, there was never a moment that I could that I can remember uh, growing up or even in my young family and having my mom with me for me to even uh, talk back to my mother. It's like I'm still living at home. I live that kind of life, and when I start facing that with my uh, daughter, I, I thought to myself, okay, this is one of the new things that I need to know how to handle. And, and I'm glad that she's uh, sharing this morning. Um, I mean, it's coming from her with uh, <clears throat> everything that she was going through. And uh, even after all those, I tried and sent her back to school. So I got in a, uh, a, a sister-in-law of mine. She may be listening in today. Uh, thank you, Auntie Valili, for your help uh, on that year. Um, she's actually my, my husband's uh, sister. So I pay her to come every week to look after her boys um, <clears throat> while she goes back to school. So I finance her school to go back to school so she can graduate. And even in that process, uh, you know, she still do what she does. And uh, to the extent of not finishing it and throwing the whole thing back and, you know, just move out and living her life, which I never go or attempt in any way to stop her. I just give her room. I'm sharing it from the parental uh, standpoint while you hear her sharing from, you know, um, my daughter and then uh, with that age group that you can learn from youths uh, of today. And um, with everything happening, and even until, you know, year after year, I used to dread the fact when my phone ring, uh, it's either the money lender calling for payment or um, somebody that she went and borrowed money from, or a police uh, looking for her, or a police report uh, being received. And um, I've reached, like, I mean, I always say that I've cried the tears and uh, to the stage when you pray and you can't feel any more tears coming, uh, I know what it's like. Uh, I've been through it. What, but what really helped me is my faith in God uh, that got me through uh, that face of my life. So you may be a parent listening to me today, and you may be facing this now, but you don't know where to take it to. I, for those kind of moments, I believe there's nothing else that can help you, uh, but only the fact knowing that you have a God who can help you and, uh, and give you that solace or closure uh, for you to be able to do that. And um, I remember the, the sleepless nights uh, of just crying. And sometimes I continue to ask God, why me out of all the parents? Um, and I used to tell God these things, you know, I grew up in a family very staunch. We, we uh, worship you um, with my family, with my mom and dad. I've never known the world and I don't go out at all. 
I don't go partying. Uh, I don't go drinking. I, I don't, I've never experienced the life of a normal teenager or a normal youth out there in the world. And now <clears throat> that I have my own family and my daughter is doing this is the very opposite things to my life. Uh, that was really um, challenging me in so many ways. And uh, I was thinking on, on how to handle because I've never handled that before. Well, with all that, it uh, never take away my love for her. Um, <clears throat> never a moment that she walked through my door. It's always like in, it, it always have a story. She always have a drama before she make her entrance to come back. So it's either she's half dead <laughs> or she's entering my door on, on the wheelchair, or she's bruised all over. Every part of her body is black and bruised. Uh, she's always returning home um, with, her, with her story. But never a time when she comes in those moments um, for me to turn to her and say, I've told you so, or you shouldn't have done that. Every moment when she comes back and she can remember that, I'm always hugging her and say, uh, I'm glad you're still alive. I'm just so glad you're still alive. And um, today I would be, you know, like, yeah, I don't know how, how to say it, but this is the moment that I was praying for all this time to just to have her to know God, uh, serve God, and have a relationship with God. Um, for me, that's an answer to my pr prayer for three decades of, uh, I've, I've gone past the moments of uh, looking out into the driveway or waiting for the car. Um, I don't do those things anymore um, with everything that I was going through. Uh, the only prayer I was praying, um, Lord, wherever my daughter is, please bring, home, bring her home. Or if she's going somewhere else, please look after her. And, and sometimes it can be in the middle of the night. I don't know whether you can remember. Uh, one time we were coming back from Nandi and out of the blue, I just thought of her. Uh, because she's always everywhere and anywhere. And the thing that bothers me, she's lugging her two sons with her. I kept the oldest one who's always with me from birth. And um, one particular time I told um, one of our family friends, Talanga Siso, and I said, please, I don't know where she is, but all I know she's living somewhere here in uh, Ratambu area, uh, close to the YWAM base. Uh, if you can just look out um, and check uh, which corner uh, she's in. And I don't know whether she remember, he did find, find them. But when he did, uh, he came and I was asking him, did you find them? Uh, did you get to see her? And uh, the answer was just tears. Uh, he was just crying. So I looked at him and I said, what happened? And uh, he, kept, he kept nodding and said, I, I saw her. Um, and said, uh, are they good? Yes, they are good. So I gave um, a shopping list uh, for him to buy and to take it back. And later on, then he was uh, recounting uh, that experience uh, to us, uh, to her parents, to say, you know, when I walked into this uh, house, um, dirty, just a one room, brick, no plaster, um, no stove, no nothing, the basic need, it's not there. Um, and when he looked at her and her two sons, and he thought of, the meals on the table that we're eating and everything. And uh, that was the reason when he came back, he couldn't relate that story. And, um, and those are the moments uh, that she had gone through uh, in those years uh, of her life. Like what she's saying, even from that experience, uh, to come back uh, to normalcy and what God has for you to guide and direct, uh, she still refused to, to listen, uh, which goes to you youth if you're listening today. Um, sometimes, like what I said, you will be saying, oh, my parents keep on talking, oh, I'm tired. Uh, at home, it's me. And sometimes I will be telling them, I know you're tired of hearing your mom's voice, or I know you will be saying, oh, there goes mom again. Nearly everybody's going and say, okay, I'm going at the door. I will say, be careful with your driving. I remember the speed limit. And to them, it's like they roll their eyes, you know, like, there she goes again. Uh, all those things that they used to do. Well, I, I believe there are some moms out there like me like we are always doing the talking, uh, because you care. And you know it's known, but you still care. And uh, I did what I did. I go out of my way in doing everything. And I've reached a stage that because of the things that she continues to do, it's either I'm paying money or I'm paying this bailiff or 
uh, paying this money that she owed somebody or paying off something that she walked away from. Um, I've reached a stage that I just don't want anything to do with her anymore. <laughs> so I stopped looking her way and I was telling God, I think I deserve uh, to be happy and I deserve uh, not to be looking over my shoulder and I deserve not to be worried whether my, whether my um, girl is out there alive or something have happened to her. Uh, for two cases that I've shared, uh, we managed to save her in the nick of time. Um, first, when she had a, a gash on her head, uh, struck by a knife. And uh, when um, her dad, when she had that energy or the strength to call in the middle of the night, and they were staying in the place not far from home, renting out. So when um, her dad went to uh, bring her, or blood gushing over, covering her face, and uh, she had uh, her son, uh, with her uh, two uh, little boys. One she just gave birth to and she was still in her three or four months uh, um, after giving birth uh, to bring her home. So we stayed with us for about two years. But the thing is, go back to it, find another man. And uh, another phone call to her brother and uh, her dad when they came, uh, rushed her to the emergency. According to the doctor, five minutes late, she would have gone and she returned home in her wheelchair. And even then, went back again. So like the extreme of disobedience, if anybody to share on that, it would be her uh, to what she is today. And I believe now, um, when you look back, you felt that you were really blessed with the fact that you are in this place. I'm still alive. That, that she's still, still alive. alive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what can you tell um, the youth that are listening when it comes to disobedience before we switch to um, Asinate Vula Ono uh, this morning? All I can say is disobedience is costly. Yeah. It takes years of your life. Uh, shorter, your life is cut short. Yeah. Uh, you miss most important points in your life where you could have done something useful and m more to impact people. Um, a lot of my friends always say that I'm stuck up because of the fam my family background. Uh, what, but what they don't realize, I wasn't with my family most of my life. I was on my own. And I know what it is to struggle. I know what it is to eat and just drink water uh, with my two kids. Who mixes water and sugar and feeds it to an infant just so uh, to get by? Um, if you're saying that I've, I haven't been there, I have. Mm -hmm. I've been divorced twice. Uh, an event where uh, there was uh, extramarital affairs. I've come across being abused. If you're saying, oh, I don't know what abuse is, I do. I've been emotionally, physically abused. Uh, to the point where when I came back, when I made a turning point in my life, it was really hard. It was easy for me to see the good in others, but it was hard to see the good in me. I call myself worthless. And when I say worthless, I felt like I was even worthless than my sons. I ne never counted myself to be able to be worthy to sit with my family in church. That's how much I looked at myself. When I go home, because in my home, I'm so used to serving my family. Uh, but when I go home, when I turned, I made a turning point in my life, it was hard for me to sit together with them and eat. It was hard to spark a conversation. Like now, my mom and I, or my dad, my, with even my sons, we have a normal conversation. But when I first made a turning point in my life, I didn't know what to say. Mm, it was hard for you to fit in because uh, it yes. was a totally different life you Do lived then. Totally yeah. different life. Because when I left, I left when I was 18. And to some of you thinking, that men will give you peace, I'm here to tell you no. Yeah. So what youths are looking out for now and they're studying and they're looking the other way. I mean, yeah. <laughs> some of you have got boyfriends and girlfriends, it's, but it's, don't allow it to take yeah, away your it, life. I'm not saying it's bad not uh, to have a man. What I'm saying is stay focused on what you wanted before you met that man. Yeah. Get a house, a car, is something I, I regret not doing before you meet that man. Get a job to feed your parents, to 
comfort your parents before you meet, before you dedicate your whole life with that man. On a gay other man. Yeah. Washing clothes, oh my God. I tell you, I don't miss that at all. I love my life now because when I made a turning point, the difference is this. For almost 10 years of my life, I've lived on my own, loaning credit really bad. Had, my clothes are circulated from the time I've left home. I never bought anything new for myself. Drinking from Monday to Sunday, going to work intoxicated, grog dope. Attending every function, dumped my sons with my ex-husband. <coughs> got married again, got abused. No, I still chose to go and try and show myself that I'm independent. If you think that's independent, it's not being independent. Being independent is being able to finance yourself, provide mm. for yourself, it's not right. running back to your parents. That's not independent. Now I would say I'm independent. Well, she's in a better <laughs> place now and uh, being able to share that yeah. as well. I am proud to say I'm yeah. a single mom with five children, three still unaccounted for. Mom yeah. Is still doing a job. She's a very good social media <laughs> mom when it comes to the three bigger ones because she will be posting, oh, my son, my son, my son. <laughs> but my girls stay with yeah. me. Uh, they are, you have beautiful girls. Yeah, they are from my second marriage. I... I I have had to learn from raising my girls. My son's just good to give birth and change diapers, carry, carry around, but to look after them to primary like school. Like as a parent yes, uh, role, no. I think you do it now I'm with I'm doing your it now girls. with my yeah. girls. I had to ask my sister, okay, how do we enroll? When do we enroll? That's embarrassing. At my age to be asking, my sister <laughs> who's six years younger than me does not have children, mind you. No. Hasn't had children yet. <laughs> yes, we're waiting for her twins. But, like, uh, what I was saying is, I made a turning point in my life in 2019 on my birthday when she called me to move to Suva. I had a job in Nandi. I was living with my friend, Selena. Thank you, Selena. Uh, she was one, one person that, uh, that helped me uh, during my abusive relationship because I refused to listen to my parents. I ran away to Nandi. Um, my sister brought me back, paid for my rent. Rent is 900, food. Uh, How many years were you living off your sister? <sighs> three, four for years, the, for the, five years? Uh, for three years, three years. Yeah, that's she three years, so. financing me. So 900, if you calculate 12, three is 36, 36 by 900. That's I mean, that, that's a blessing when you have a good support system yes. uh, from home. But if you don't, then please don't try what she yes, did. Yes, don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is yeah. just be wise in your decision. And be obedient and, to your parents. And just listen to your parents. Your in-laws, at the moment, achieve what, the best you can, do the best you can, go places. Things are provided for you. In, during my time, we didn't have what children are now having. You have that opportunity, take it, grasp it, do whatever with it. But I'm fortunate I had a good uh, support system and that my mom turned around to love me again. Um, so apart from making a turning point, I now have my own car. I live with my two girls. I buy my food. I can go places. I, I hold a steady job. Uh, all I can say is this yeah. is this this can happen for you, but you don't need to go through the process that she yes. had to reach you don't that need, good life. You don't need to to cry and struggle in order to get where yeah. I am. No, I'm telling I'm sharing my life to you so that you can avoid that and reach where I am now at your age. So you can be 18, almost finishing finishing high school, going to tertiary. Make write down your list is all yeah. I can say. Write your list down. I started writing my list when I decided to listen in 2020. Amazing how what you jot down, because when you think what you want, after all, you forget about it. But mm. when you jot it down in a journal or a book that you're always holding or referring to, yeah. somehow it'll pop up and all of a sudden your mind just goes, man, Lord, I want this, 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 yeah. this. And when you write your list, don't generalize it. Be specific. 
one of my list, like my list, year after year, it's just, if it's not all happening, but it's coming. Yeah. All I can say, it's your testing moment. Yes. Where God tests you because he can't, if, trust me, if he had to give all everything we wanted, we won't be serving God as yeah. much as we are. But he wants us to trust in him. And to know that he is the source of, of it all. whatever yeah. you're getting. That is a message to you youths that are listening in today. For me, the shortcut, whenever I talk to my grandchildren, who are mostly her children, and I will say, I don't need to go into details. You look at mom, and you look at her uncle, look at Uncle Elijah, look at Auntie Kula, and look at Auntie Fia. The decision you make now, take you to those two directions. So that's your choice that you have with you. Now, uh, we're coming towards uh, the last 10 minutes of our program this morning, I would like to invite uh, Asnate Vulawano. She's actually uh, married to uh, my only son, Elijah. And um, Nate, we were talking about, you know, like growing up, the things, uh, because the youth mostly are listening in today. And not only that, but even young parents, eh? you know, the, uh, from your angle, you're a very young parent. You've got two, two children, one daughter and a son. A uh, thing that you can uh, share that can uh, help if you're listening in as a child, the decision that you need to make, you know, that will affect, or like uh, when she's uh, sharing today, the wrong decision that she made, that uh, when she turned around, she went this way, or the support system available at that time, and uh, advice to the youngsters, like don't go around this way, but go this way. So <laughs> share with us whatever is in your heart and uh, share to the people, or if you're all talking, because we're all sitting there, you can just look at that camera in front of us there. Eh? Mm. Uh, so I think my story is so much different from uh, Rosie. Uh, hearing Rosie's uh, testimony is very encouraging. Uh, for myself, uh, it's a, a totally different uh, story. So uh, as I testified uh, one Sunday, I was brought up uh, in a family. Uh, I had my mom, dad, and my siblings. Uh, but uh, my father was an alcoholic. Eh? Mm. So uh, growing up from um, at that time, being uh, at that house, um, not knowing uh, what was my purpose in life or um, just being so angry at the world mm. and uh, just being, uh, I believe, uh, just being so angry at the world for the situation that I was going mm. through. And uh, but at that time, because uh, I was still going uh, in um, in a Wesley church, the like I I wasn't praying that much or anything. But I was like I think I was like talking to God. I was saying uh, why why this? Why am I facing this? And uh, mm -hmm. and I I would always really say uh, Lord, I know you have a purpose for me. Or please help me go through this uh, when I was at home. Eh? And um, I joined the youth uh, New Methodist Christian Fellowship at a really young age uh, in 2007, and uh, from that year onwards, I I realized that uh, there's a purpose in my life yeah. uh, because I, when I came, I learned uh, so much uh, a Bible verse. Uh, for once, uh, the John 1 3 it says, Ni kakirina savak, salaka pukwa, sing don kasavak, sing the kapukwa. So, in my heart, like it helps you to accept the situation that you were in. Yes. Yeah. So, and then I was uh, hearing every advice that was coming in, uh, and uh, because my, only my mom was coming to church and my dad wasn't. So, I was uh, going to youth and trying to. Um, trying to ask God uh, to help me with this side, eh? my father's side. Eh? So I thank God uh, for the youth that are listening in. Uh, if you're like, if a youth right now, uh, make the most of it as a youth. Yeah. Eh? Um, go, when you do, do your item, do it in your uh, uh, most ability, when yeah. you go out for visiting, when you pray, when you fast, because uh, uh, before, uh, when, we were, when we were in the youth, I remember, like, uh, the youths were youths, eh? they were like, holy, holy, eh? like, when we always <laughs> go to school, uh, people always call us holy, holy, but now youths are, ten, like, they are turning around, they are like half, half, eh? yeah. it's like you're coming to youth, but you're doing yeah. uh, the other, world, things, other yeah. worldly stuff, but so half, and half. half and half, eh? <laughs> but uh, if you're doing that, and you're, ask, and you're going through a situation that you don't like, you just ask yourself, you don't, like, sometimes when you're, you're doing 
the wrong things and you like you ask God eh? uh, why am I facing this facing that but it's all up to you uh, for the, the now when you're going to youth you you need to uh, listen to the advice and do things that um that are in a correct way that way you will uh, face um, good life uh, in the future yeah. eh? like for myself like uh, like I really grasp the teachings from the whole of my youth time because like my life at home wasn't that good. So I had to come to God uh, wholeheartedly, like 100%, give my life to God so that he can fix uh, this side. So I thank God uh, for um, that teaching from at my younger age. Uh, like I really didn't have to go through uh, the life that is not... Um, like a young girl's life to come to God. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so I thank God for that every situation, exposure. that exposure yeah. uh, that made me who I am yeah. today. Uh, Nati, would you like to uh, uh, share a little bit on the uh, um, teenage pregnancy? You know, like when you had your, your first uh, born, uh, when that happened, what was the, you know, the deciding moment of your life or the support system from your mom? or the support system uh, around you uh, that happened. Because I believe, like when I hear, I think Philo would be listening today, when I hear Philo, uh, when she mentioned about her experiences on how she said she read the fact to tell her father, but when she did, the father was happy, jumping up and down, you know, like the, the, you know, the recipient from home is uh, totally different. Eh? Um, totally different, um, like in cases, okay. And I have cases when I always share about this young girl who called, um, I've got the neck on her, a uh, rope on her neck uh, under mango tree because she dread the fact what she's going to be facing with her dad. Um, because I believe there's a lot of um, uh, youth listening in today, uh, some may have gone through and never have that any support system. I also, during this program, heard about uh, one of our youths, and I know you're listening in today from uh, Sabeto, she also shared when she had her daughter, she was told to leave home. And uh, she was always looking for a place to stay. Uh, you have different stories of um, young girls um, out there listening in. It's not that uh, we support in the, in, the, in the thinking that it's okay to do it, but it's on the other side that when it happened, there's nothing you can do about it. But moving forward, uh, what do you do? Because we can deny it to be tumbo, ningwan and darong other kin, they live in a kind of a car, right? Without thinking. Um so telling a weekend of a case in Renrem and the Vingoma. Um, when Nate came into my life, uh, somehow, because I'm always close to this Holy Spirit. And it's amazing. I don't know whether you remember, we used to have this uh, uh, youth at, at the Fourth Shore, like big, big youth rally when you do the, the tire, the whatever, the bag, you know, three-legged race. I've never met you. Um, but I saw this particular photo, like everybody. But somehow you stood out. You were sitting, I don't know whether you can remember this photo, uh, like a youth, like all colors. Uh, you were in the middle of this um, big like that the team and when i look it sort of like stood out like i look and i said oh this is pretty good like I, and i don't know why i kept on looking at the photo and i kept on looking you know and, and i was saying to myself who is this uh, girl so like i never asked anybody i didn't realize then god was trying to show me that you are my daughter-in-law like later like i think right late the first time when I actually physically meet you is when you had uh, Sunny, and uh, that's when I met you. But other than that, we haven't met. But when that happened, um, maybe because I have three girls, but my heart was, and maybe because I just love my children, you, you were like my daughter. Uh, I, I treat you like my daughter because you are uh, married to my only son. And, uh, and not only that, like when you, I remember the days when you uh, are going through your pregnancy. Um, I remember when Elijah used to come and said, oh, mom, um, she wants to eat grapes or she wants to 
And I remember the days when we used to and I'll wait in the car and he'll get off the car to bring it to you. So if you can just share whatever you want to share this morning, because there may be a young woman out there uh, listening to your story today. Um, now you are a proud uh, mother, uh, travel places, uh, have your life, you have your car. But uh, there are moments in your life that um, you were going around with your son looking for a place to stay. So, praise the Lord. <coughs> um, so, I would like to share about uh, teenage pregnancy, and I think this is the first time that I'm sharing it. Uh, so, um, at the end of Form 6, uh, I got pregnant. And uh, as I shared before, um, I started youth in 2007, so that was like class 7, 8, mm -hmm. 9, Form 3, Form 4, Form 5. And the, as the years goes by, um, like the thing that I was facing at home, because like uh, I started to feel tired of praying for my dad and all eh, with the things that I was facing. And uh, when I met uh, Elijah, um, I think I felt so loved. Eh? Um, he, uh, <laughs> he looked out for me uh, at the time we were dating. And um, uh, when I got pregnant in, uh, uh, at the end of 2012, like when, when that love was coming and provided for you, you trusted. Because the thing that you never have before, like you always have to look out for your siblings. Uh, at times you're always fearing for your mom. Yeah. And when that, when somebody else come in and look being up. able to, for, to give that love yeah. to you, um, automatically all your trust, like you have your guards down. Yeah. Everything, like you thought. Mm. Because I'm the eldest in the family, yeah. and uh, when you're the eldest, you have to like look after yeah. your siblings. Eh? And uh, when he came into my life, it's like uh, I felt so special because he looked after me, eh? and I trusted him with all my life. And uh, we didn't mean uh, for me to get pregnant, but it happened. We talked about it. Uh, we cried about it. We didn't know what to do at that time. Um, <laughs> And then when we were pla planning, because uh, uh, they were like uh, my church leaders, I didn't want anything to go out or to link out. Eh? So we talked about it, and uh, we came to a, a plan for me to go to Kandavu, just to go and like for no one to know about what I have, um, that I'm pregnant. And then when I came, uh, I didn't tell my mom first because I know she would just uh, go all out on me. So I told my, one of my auntie, uh, Auntie Josie, and then we told my mom, and uh, she just, we just cried, you know, the process. I know uh, some of uh, you young girls would know yeah. what, I'm, what I'm talking about. So we talked about it and everything, and then the, la the person that I was so dead scared to see say to was my father and uh, one particular afternoon uh, I think um, and everything uh, I couldn't stay at home so I went to my uncle who lives right in Bilo uh, when we went there then I then my uncle and all my my mom's eldest uh, brother they went they went to my dad and they they went and told my dad uh, what has transpired. Yeah, yeah. Eh? Uh, from that particular time that uh, we were facing as a, me and uh, Elijah, um, deep down in my heart, truly, I was happy because I know, like, even if we don't uh, get along with Elijah, I know that I have someone with me uh, as a part of him that that I can uh, rely on or who can give me strength to continue life as uh, like life was just going to school mm. coming back sad angry feeling this hatred in my life but uh, to uh, like it brought joy to, joy to my life uh, we were at the time we wanted to do abortion everything you know I know people would um, uh, do the same uh, but uh, in my life, when we were talking about it, 
like I would tell him, whatever you decide, I will go with it. But for me, I was really, really happy uh, with the what I, when I was pregnant, because it gave me a more strength of purpose to someone that could be close to me and love. So I was going from houses to houses uh, just to go by. And uh, when Sunny came, uh, he was just a big part of our lives. Like, um, like thinking of the teenage pregnancy was no longer there. Eh? It <laughs> yeah, was just- it brought in a lot of joy. joy. <laughs> yeah, when she was going uh, through um, what she had gone through, uh, these are for the parents that are listening in or people that are listening in as well uh, because we're coming towards the end of our program, I believe. And uh, when that was happening uh, then, um, I remember when my, on the other hand, on how my son uh, came and told me about it, I can still remember the night. Uh, I remember the place. We were at the Fijian Hotel then uh, as a family when my daughter came in from New Zealand from school on a break and we uh, took a weekend uh, time out. And during that moment, uh, when my son said, Mom, I want to talk to you, uh, if we can go out into the patio. And when he mentioned that, I didn't know how to feel. I looked at him, I hugged him, I cried, and I said, the, the only thing that I've ever asked him, uh, does she know God? I just wanted whoever that she's involved with uh, to have a relationship with God. Uh, because I believe, you know, if that is the case, then it's, I mean, whatever they're going to go through, they will have that guideline, um, you know, that you uh, love God. And when he mentioned the fact that she's a youth, like what I said, I haven't met. Um, and from that moment, I supported him. Um, I supported him in every way. Um, I know her cravings uh, for pregnancy uh, that, she, that he will buy or I give finances for and uh, drop it off with her. And um, I remember the day uh, she gave birth. Uh, he was waiting at the car park, uh, bought all the baby stuff, and uh, he showed me her house when we were driving in, and I said, Elijah, how did you find this girl? You live right in here in the interiors. And uh, all those things were happening. And I was looking at him and having a good laugh with him, and I said, oh, my gosh, you know, like, you found this place. And, um, but from when it happened, um, I've been the, uh, I would say, the unseen supporting mom uh, behind the scene, apart yeah. from her mom supporting her in so many ways. So, so even after financing everything, buying the baby stuff, and, um, I, uh, and I passed on to Elijah and said, okay, you two, I will not force anything on you to live your life, uh, go back to school, and uh, pray about it. If you feel in your heart that this is the way to go and moving forward, that God wants you two to be together, and then let it be. But I don't want you people to come together being married for the fact just to maintain because you are our children and we lead a ministry and um, because the baby's out there. So I financed her studies uh, to go back to school, and I think you still need to finish that one. And uh, she was going back to school, uh, paid for her school fees to go, and uh, also uh, offered if uh, she wants for uh, Sunny to come and stay uh, with us. And uh, it became um, our weekend thing. And, uh, and I always, I don't know whether you still remember nothing, but I don't like those moments. Uh, the moment when I need to go and pick her son, um, Sunny or Cherry or Nate, listening to us today, or small Elijah, and uh, the moments of dropping him off. When I'm picking him up um, in the car to bring him, um, he's crying and she's crying. Um, just so hard to say bye to her son. And the time when I have to drop him off on Sunday, he's crying and I'm crying. So it's like those moments. And even when they have to go for um, clinic, she has to come and I will go with uh, my husband uh, to take them. And when after the clinic and everything, we drop, I get dropped off first with uh, Sunny while uh, she goes home. And those moments when he begins to speak, uh, you know, like going on to two, and when he is turning around and saying, um, Nana, why can't my mom come and stay with us? Uh, why is she go always going? Uh, it's so hard uh, to see these two uh, uh, as a mother and a son on how close they were. And uh, that really got me. And the only prayer I had, Lord, if it's your will, then you bring uh, this family together. Which he did. And by that time, I think Sunday was four or five. Mm, three. Uh, yeah, three. Three. Yeah? Uh, three. And... Um, and that day the, was the most happiest day in my life, just to see them staying, standing together, giving their vows, um, getting married, because I know it's sort of like a closure to my son. 
uh, my grandson on the questions like, why can't my mom stay with us? And, and this goes to young women that are listening to us today. Maybe uh, your story is totally different from Nate's, uh, as she's uh, sharing this morning. Maybe you don't have that support system, or maybe you regret what you have done, but you can't do anything about it. Because you have two innocent, beautiful eyes looking at you, and the only thing that they know of their life is you. So don't be negative and don't give up on life because you become the source of hope for that little uh, beautiful baby that you've just had. And um, continue to move on. Uh, find little things that you can do. If you're a believer and you listen to the youth program today, ask God to guide you and to lead you. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. So we will try to continue next Saturday uh, with more stories from the two because I know they have a lot of stories to share. <laughs> and uh, like today, we are summing it up. Uh, the little disobedience that can uh, distract you, uh, the little dis disobedience that can uh, stall or uh, waste the years of your achievement, and uh, also the little things in life that when you can't cope uh, with um, abuse uh, relationship at home or the atmosphere at home, you start looking out for any, any offering of love that is out there. And when you do, then sometimes the way you handle it, it can be the determining factor of your future. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're here, bold to come and share their stories, because whatever they're sharing today, it's indirectly telling you, if you're thinking of doing this, or if you happen to be on the same course as I was, uh, please just be careful. Keep your antenna up and be alert that you can tweak it a little bit so you can have a, a much more better uh, ending mm -hmm. you know, than them. So I'm really blessed this morning uh, that they were unwillingly invited uh, to this uh, forum. Uh, they had 101 excuses, but I don't force them, but I'm really glad because I want them to come and share their stories for themselves. I can be recounting their stories, but it's not the same when they share their own. And uh, we look forward to you youths and also young moms and young parents that are listening to us today uh, to come back with more for next Saturday that it can be an insight or it can inspire you or it can help you to be the person you can be. Because always remember, Jeremiah 29 and 11, when God says what it is, he means what it is. I alone know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, never to harm you, and to bring about the future that you hope for. Wherever you are outside of Fiji, out there in the world, being expo uh, exposed, working, earning money, always remember, at the end of the day, in Ephesians 6.1, honor your parents. Because all these things, not only will be good, or you have a good life, but also the longest life. And that's what obedient to your parents does and open opportunities uh, for your blessings. So on that note, from the studio here in Turaki, uh, from the three ladies, um, we would like to say thank you. So say your goodbyes uh, to the people out there and <laughs> praise the Lord and thank you. Laka. Laka. <laughs>